Well, here we have an absolutely beautiful 1972 sedan to build with about 6,000 miles. You can tell it's a 72 because the parking light is there in the middle, not in the bumper like it is on the 71. And as I mentioned, this is a particularly low mileage car. You can see the hood doesn't have the bevel as well compared to the Eldorado of the same year. Distinguishing feature that was unique to the Eldorado. This just has kind of a raised section, if you will, a bit of a boat tail. It does share the same bumper center bar that I just pointed out with the Eldorado, albeit the other pieces of the bumper are different. This car came out in 1971, and this overall platform lasted until 1976. With a number of significant styling changes, the 71 and 2s are similar. Slight differences in the front and the rear end, as I mentioned, the turn signals changed. In the front the rear got a rub strip in the back and this one i believe is finished in a color called tawny beige metallic not quite sure but it sure looks like that color and it shows off this beautiful surfacing on the side here particularly the spear in the back that rear quarter panel the form that you see and here you can see this little rub strip that was added for 1972 not going to do much and the lack of the louvers in the trunk that the 71 would have had these trunks are especially huge because of the vertical forms of the fins. I actually owned one of these cars. I owned a dark green 72 sedan DeVille, and one day I lost my pen in the back of the trunk, and I could not reach it from the back, could not reach it from the side. I had to crawl into the trunk to retrieve it because it had rolled to the front. That's how big the trunks are in this car. And checking out the interior... This one's got a cloth interior, which actually looks really rich. Again, this is a six, I think six, 7,000 mile car. So really nice looking interior. Normally these interiors to me look kind of cheap, but you can see the wiper control there. It's on the door. And overall, I think because of the low mileage and the lack of wear, this car just really shines. You can see the lamp monitor in the middle there that you could see visible. And there are the lamp monitors and the front fenders. So the one in the middle of the back seat is for the rear taillights that you could see in your rear view mirror to make sure that they were working when you stopped or put on your turn signal. And the front bench seat's pretty high back bench seat. Cadillac was actually into safety during this time period. Other divisions didn't have as high of a seat back or the headrest but Cadillac did for some time really starting around the late 60s and you can see it's got AM FM the wonder bar radio you push the button at the top it's single signal seeking it does have guidematic headlamp control as well as automatic headlamp dimmer so pretty well loaded car and as I back away again you can see it's really just a substantial vehicle these road atop 130 inch wheelbase and we're about 227 inches in overall length so 13 inches shy of 20 feet long just enormous vehicles of course the Fleetwood Brome was longer riding atop 133 inch wheelbase and topping 230 inches in length but the DeVille it's hard to call this car a small car and this car even has I believe the original BF Goodrich tires on it that's how original this car is. I don't know that I'd want to be driving it with those, but pretty amazing. You can see this glass. The door is so big, but yet the glass on these GM uh, large cars never drops all the way into the door, amazingly. There's always that little piece that's left. This would be the last year for this particular rear-end styling treatment. Before it would change in 1973 to accommodate a 2.5 mile per hour bumper standard in the rear, and the front would also change in 73 to accommodate a 5-mile-an-hour bumper standard. Lose some of the plan view or the point of the hood because of that in 73. Here you can see these BF Goodrich, what appear to be original tires on the car. So this is kind of the last year for that pointy, that full point front end, if you will, with the excellent plan view, which is just particularly handsome on this car. In 73, they'd also changed the interior, uh, particularly the door panels, to have more substantial anchor points. As a lot of people would pull out the pull strap on these, trying to close the door.
Let's take a look at this 1972 coupe here, which was also at the car show. Another beautiful color on this car. I want to say it's a color called Zodiac Blue, and here with blue leather interior. Now, one interesting little tidbit during this time frame, Cadillac was trying to save some money, interestingly, and the buttons on this, as opposed to being leather-wrapped, are plastic, which to me is just not in keeping with what this car should have been. But you can see beautiful blue on this with a white roof, stunning color combination. The coupes and the sedans were the, basically the same length, same wheelbase, you just got longer rear quarter panels because you didn't have the second door cut in the back. But overall, beautiful cars. Let's close out with a video from a 1971 Cadillac ad. You knew it, even back then, that someday... Well, as you can see for the 1971 and 72 model years, Cadillac was still viewed very much as a prestige make, even though its quality was really starting to slip by this point. But the division still outsold previous year records into about the late 1970s. And once the 80s hit, Cadillac really took a nosedive with the introduction of the Oldsmobile diesel, particularly a standard on the Seville, then the V864 in 1981, and then the HT4100 engine in 1982. These issues really plagued Cadillac and significantly hurt their reputation, but for the early 70s, they were still riding high. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and tell your friends. So that'll help the YouTube algorithm serve it up to more people like you. And until next time, be sure to check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you, and stay tuned for more videos from this car show that I was at the Lambda Car Club meet in Michigan for some more very unique vehicles. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care.